Hi folks, Greg Marchand here. Welcome to another episode of the Virtual Instructor-Led Training Program brought to you by the Service Sales Academy. In this episode, I'm gonna to talk to you about measuring productivity. <sighs> Why should we bother, Greg? It's just one more thing for me to do. Except that time is what you sell. And if you wanna make more money, the easy thing you can do is to measure your productivity. I, I am constantly shocked at how few shops actually measure it. We talk about it, and shops talk like they measure it, but when I actually go into the shop and visit, they don't. They're not, or they did weeks ago. What gets measured gets changed, or so says Peter Drucker, the management guru, and he's right. If we measure it and we monitor it, it will change, and that's why you really, really do need to measure productivity. Look, technicians are production employees. They create the product you sell. You're selling time. The more the technician gets done in a given amount of time, the more time you have to sell. The more product they create, the more revenue you make. You should measure productivity. Or you could think of it like this. The more work you get done today, the more work we can do tomorrow. And the more work we do tomorrow means the more work we do the day after. And all those days add up to the weeks, the months, and the year. I harp in class on saying yes to customers. Don't say to a customer, uh, we're really busy today, I, can I make you an appointment for next Tuesday? No. You get as much work as possible in the shop today because that allows you to get as much work as possible in the shop tomorrow. And if we really do get up against that capacity where we cannot do any more work in a week, then we'll talk about how we expand. But very, 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 very few shops are actually at their service capacity right now as we record this, very few. Measure your productivity so that you know what you can get done today. Want more reasons why? Why does measuring work? Because we are all, we as humans, are all motivated by this, this competition thing. Whether it's internal competition with ourselves, oh, I want to do better today than I did yesterday. I want to do better tomorrow than I did today or whether it's an external competition thing. He's not gonna beat me, I'm better than he is. No, yeah, she thinks she's good? No way, I'm better than she is. She thinks she turned those hours last week? <laughs> Wait till you see what I'm gonna do this week. And you get this competition, that, and it's just, it's, it's innate in us. And no, it's not 100% of the people, but it's probably 95% of them. But even in those other 5%, growth and improvement are a human condition. Very, 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 very few people are satisfied with where they're at. Very few people don't want to grow and improve all the time. We just we see it around us. We see growth and improvement around us. We want to be a part of it. And I'm here to tell you today that just measuring will ensure growth. And that's true for any metric you want. That's true for revenue. That's true for gross profit. That's true for anything you want. Just measuring will ensure accomplishment of that goal. Greg, do you mean efficiency? No, I don't mean efficiency. Let me define what I'm talking about. The Service Sales Academy, we define productivity as the number of billable hours compared to the actual hours worked. It's a total for the day or a total for the week. Big pieces, whereas efficiency is billable hours compared to the actual amount of time it took to do that single job. It's a per job metric, a per job measurement. Not for the day, but for that single job. Efficiency is a factor of productivity. I use efficiency as a diagnostic tool if productivity isn't where we want it and we can't figure out why. For our purposes, I really just care about productivity. How many hours billable hours a day do we produce compared to how many physical hours we were there at work. 
if you're going to measure it, and you're going to, you've got to have the billable hours by technician. That's pretty easy. We'll talk about that in a second. The actual hours worked by technician. Not as easy as you'd think. Not as easy as it should be. You've got to have the Service Sales Academy app, which is probably how you're watching this video right now. Because on that app is a key performance indicator calculator. And then you've got to have a whiteboard to write this down on. Because you got to put it where people can see it. But Craig, I have the service management system. Why can't I just use my service management system? Look, depending on the system, you can. Some systems track billable hours really, really well. Some systems track actual hours really, really well because you're actually using them to punch in and, on, in and out on. And then they do the math just like I'm asking you to do the math. And they do it my way. So you can use it if your system does that. But you only want to do that, you only want to rely on your system for productivity numbers if A, you understand how your system calculates productivity. You had better understand that. You had better know that your service management system is calculating it as we're defining it or you're down a different path. And you can only use your service management system to get that productivity number and to track productivity if you're certain the billable hours are correct and the technicians are punching in and out on the system. Because we need the actual time clock hours for the for work for the for the whole day, not just individual jobs. But when I get to work, I punch in. When I go to lunch, I punch out. Come back from lunch, I punch in, etc. Right? We need those actual hours so we can compare them to the billable hours. So you can use your service management system if it's doing all this. Let's just say, I don't know if it is or not, but I want to do this. My billable hours are the hours that I actually charge the customer for. They're the ones I'm billing the customer for. That's what a billable hour is. You could call them production hours. You could call them hours produced. You can call them job hours. What it comes down to is it is essentially the labor time of each job. So if a water pump calls for six hours labor, it is six billable hours. It's the labor time of each job all added up at the end of the day. How do we track it? Look, a lot of service management systems, they are good at this. They can do a good job tracking it. So generally, generally, as long as you understand how your system is tracking it, and you can reconcile it, you can use the number the system gives you. Whatever your system calls it. All right? job time, billable hours, labor hours, whatever it might be. But you've got to ensure those numbers are accounted for correctly, especially when the repair order lines get split between technicians. So you, to make yourself feel better about this, you may have to track things manually for a few days or a week or maybe two weeks and compare the hours the technician actually accumulated in terms of billable hours, and maybe they just hand wrote it down or maybe you pull it off the repair order and you write it down and you add it up and compare that to what your system says. And if, and if it really makes sense to you and you say, yeah, all right, Johnny Technician says it had, he had 46 hours and I see, I see about 46 hours here, then your system's probably tracking it just fine and you can use those billable hours. If you look at Johnny Q Technician and he or she's got six hours for the week, but you know that they brought in four grand worth of labor dollars there's a disconnect here. There's a problem, and we got to figure that out. So most service management systems you can use to track billable hours, just make sure that they're getting accounted for properly within your overall workflow system before you just buy into those numbers and use them. The actual hours worked, and, and this shocks me how complex this gets. It shouldn't be. These are the hours that you've been at work. Subtract lunch time and subtract break time. That's all that is. But here's why it's complex. Because nobody's tracking it. It's not the actual time spent performing a specific repair, diag, or maintenance operation. That would be related to efficiency. I want to know big chunks of time. I want to know when you got to work, minus when you went to lunch, how many hours were you physically here, and how many hours did you produce for me? That's what I want to know. 
if I'm going to track them, I've got to use some sort of time clock. It can be built into the service management system, or it can be a separate system. I don't care. It can be a manual punch card. I don't care. And look, folks, as an organization, you should be using a time clock anyway. It's a legal thing. There are a lot of shops that got bailed out of legal challenges and or regulatory challenges because they had employees punching on and off and they could prove that what they were paying the employees met the labor laws. Because look, here's what we pay, how we pay, and here's them punching on and off. You've got to be using a time clock even if you don't even want to record productivity. <laughs> but if you didn't want to record productivity or measure it, you wouldn't be as far into this program either. So we got two separate things going on here. Get a time clock. You can use a manual system. You can use a virtual system. There's a lot of really good uh, time clock software out there. There's a, a system I think called On the Clock. You can go to just Google On the Clock. Um, it's a it's a good PC based system that they can employees can punch in on their cell phone, on their tablet, on the tablets from work, on a computer terminal. Uh, you can allow them or not allow them to punch in based on geolocation. It's got incredible controls in it and it's relatively inexpensive and you as an owner or manager can see it from anywhere. But you have to have a time clock for legal reasons. The second reason is we want to know these actual hours so that we can do the math. Here's the math. When you calculate productivity, there's, there's really one formula, but I'm going to show you two here. Productivity is billable hours divided by actual hours. I produce 44 hours of work that you bill a customer for. I was here for 40. You divide 44 by 40, and that's going to give you my productivity. We want productivity percent, though, because that tells us what percent of time we were really productive and whether we actually got more for the amount of time we were here or less. So that's productivity percent, the bottom formula here. Billable hours divided by actual hours and multiply that answer by 100. And that will give you your productivity percent. Now, if, it's, if I produce 40 billable hours and I work 40 hours, 40 divided by 40 is 1 times 100 is 100%. If I work, if I produce 30 hours and I work 40 hours and you do that math, that's right around 80%. So 80% of the time I was productive. Hey, you paid me for 20% of the time that I wasn't doing a whole lot. All right, but I don't care about that right now. I just care that you collect billable hours, you collect actual hours, and you do the math, and you can use the Service Sales Academy app. You just gotta put the numbers in, right? That's the easy way. <laughs> just go to, the, go to the app, touch the calculator, select productivity, and fill in what I asked you for each technician, and you'll get your productivity percent. Calculate it for each technician every week. Track your billable hours daily. You know, you can do that the next morning after everything's you know gone out for the night. And generally by you know 10, 11 o'clock, you can have these numbers, or accounting will have these numbers, or whoever's doing it will have these numbers. But track those billable hours daily and put them on that whiteboard I mentioned earlier. Total those billable hours every week. And you're going to do the same thing for the total shop. So you're going to have technician, daily, hours, and then total for the week. And then you're going to do the same thing for the shop. Total hours for the shop. Because, see, here's the thing. You can't just measure it. you got to use it. Once you calculate it, you're going to put it where technicians can see it. This is going to create that, that kind of competition between us. Especially if you talk about it every day. You should be having a daily meeting. Five minutes first thing in the morning. And if, look, if you're not doing that, then you better have one Monday morning first thing. And talk about productivity. Here was what we produced last week. This is what we would like to produce this week. Here's, here's what we have on the calendar, on the schedule. So uh, get those courtesy inspections flowing. Let's, let's sell some work because we're light on the schedule this week. Make sure your technicians know what their billable hours are every day. Make sure they know what their, their productivity percentage is every week and set targets and set goals. And, and if you really, really want to get into this, sit and set the targets with the technicians. But if you don't really want to get into it, at least set the target at 100% <laughs> and give everybody a goal, but post it every day. Calculate it and post it every single day. 
you see, your shop should have targets and goals. See, your shop target calculation is this. If you want to know how many hours per week you should be able to produce, and there's some assumptions here, but bear with me. Take the number of technicians you have, multiply that number of technicians by eight hours, and then multiply that by the number of, week, number of days every week that you're open. The assumption is every technician is 100% productive. That's the assumption. So in the perfect world, if I have four days and every technician gives me eight hours a day, that's 32 hours a day per day, I should have to schedule or should have in billable hours. And then I multiply that times the number of days I'm open, five or six or seven, whatever you are. And that's going to give me the total number of hours I should be able to bill for every week. And if I want the productivity percentage, then I'll take those billable hours that I actually do produce, divide it by that target, multiply it by 100, and it'll tell me whether, I'll, whether I'm hitting this number or not. It's an efficiency number, right? We call it productivity, but it's, but it's, look, what percent of our target are we actually hitting? The individual technician goal should be 100% or greater in terms of productivity percentage. In other words, if I pay them for 40 hours every week, they should give me 40 hours of billable time or more. If they're only giving me 30 hours, then I'm paying them for more than what they're producing for me. Factory wouldn't do that. The shop goal should be 100% or greater. I could have a technician at 125%, another one at 85% and still hit my shop goal. That's probably a more realistic number. So figure out your target hours per week at 100% productivity and figure out what you're doing right now. Divide your total billable or your average billable hours over the last year by your target hours and see how productive you are. Do the math. Measure it and you're going to grow. If you measure productivity, you're exercising a, a tremendous management tool and even more so a tremendous growth tool. Time is what you sell. Measure how much time you produce. Measure how much you should produce and measure how much time you will produce or you do produce and compare the two. Collect the billable hours, collect actual hours, get the KPI calculator on that Service Sales Academy app and start doing the math. Get yourself a whiteboard, start putting the math on the whiteboard and start talking about it in your shop meetings and you will grow, I promise. Till next time, keep up the great work and never stop learning.